Welcome back, everyone, to another fabulous episode of The Hot Slice, brought to you by the gang at Pizza Today. That's me, Denise, Katie, Jeremy, you know, the whole gang. So, uh, speaking of, my co-host today is the uh, lovely executive editor of Pizza Today, Miss Denise Greer. Well, hello, Josh. It is, and we're doing this on a Monday first. Can we just say that we're doing it on a Monday morning? Early um, Monday morning. So Early yeah. Monday morning. So please still, forgive us. Still doing forgive the coffee. Us. So I've already <laughs> downed all my coffee. I've downed every bit of coffee in my house right now. So I'm uh, going to need more. Uh, but and guess what? Know. Today is National Pizza Month. So it is. We, we, we have a busy, we have a busy month. We, oh. between National Pizza Month, um uh, you know working on our, our december issue uh november yeah. issues uh and you know we kind of got a little show called pizza and pasta northeast in atlantic city yeah. in a couple weeks so a lot going on right now but absolutely that's exciting because that's exciting yeah. you know we went through a couple years with nothing going on so it's it's i, I welcome all the all the chaos. i'd rather be too busy than not busy enough i mean absolutely. come on let's just call it but pizza and pasta northeast super excited for it and then you know we're getting ready to get some episodes out, and actually, one may be out by the time this airs. Um, yeah, it should be for the, update the, the, show, the, the amazing yeah, the, update show, the pizza and pasta update show. It's where <laughs> Denise and I bring you all the exciting things that are going to be happening at Pizza and Pasta Northeast. We haven't had one since 2019. S- super excited to get back there. It's my favorite show. No offense to Pizza Expo. But yeah. Pizza and Pasta Northeast is my favorite show because uh, it's a, a little smaller. It's a little more yeah. intimate. Uh, the conversations are really good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Did I tell you that I think we're going to have some microphones where we're going to do some some yes. on the show floor interviews for the Hot yep. Slice? So if you see yep. us at the show, just kind of like, I mean, don't tug me hard. I'm fragile. <laughs> but, you know, tug on me and be like, Denise, where's that <laughs> microphone at? And we'll, we'll get yeah. you get you going yeah. so we're going to do some on the street interviews uh, but yeah. on the red carpet interviews <laughs> uh, carpet interviews i like it yeah so um uh, yeah be be sure to find us uh if we're around and uh and uh, would love to get a little mini podcast in with you absolutely so let's talk guests today so our yeah. guests actually sent me an email and they're like hey we love this show we think it's great uh here we want to tell you our story and put us on the show so i've said Okay, we'll put you on the show. Why not? You are, you have a great story. So yeah. we talked to Ralph and his sons, Joe and Jordan, from La Famiglia uh, in Huntington, West Virginia, uh, which is also where Marshall University is. If you're yeah. a Marshall fan or you happen to be a Marshall alumnus, uh, there you go. It's a beautiful city. I've drove through it a few times. Uh, and, you know, you're just kind of in the middle of West Virginia, and then you see this nice little beautiful city. Yeah. kind of right you know out of nowhere so yeah it's a it's a great little city they have a they have an awesome story because i yeah. mean you know they bring napolitana uh pizza to to west virginia, uh, to west virginia. so yeah. you know 12 years ago so yeah yeah they're uh they were breaking a lot of ground for sure yeah and what i love is that uh the sons went to uh well they all went to marshall yeah. uh but just that love of making food for their friends uh, turned into a business and here comes Ralph over hey let's start a business here uh, and let's make it happen because you, you know usually people leave their college town they go off and they start their careers they they settled in their college town so I just I think that's a fascinating story and the fact that they actually have a second location in Marshall's campus like yeah and that's a, that's there. something we see a lot happening now so yeah. uh, it's not the chains that are going into the uh, the campus it's it's the yeah. Uh, smaller independence and that's a great thing to see so mm-hmm. yeah let's uh without any further ado let's get into their story and uh roll right uh, in hear that that's the sound of a pizza being made with delicious bacio cheese for the past decade bacio has provided customers exceptional italian pizza cheese with its signature kiss of buffalo milk with a superior melt, endless stretch, and a rich, creamy taste beyond compare, Baccio is honored to celebrate this 10-year anniversary with all of its partners. Schedule a demonstration at bacciocheese.com slash hot slice to learn more. Pizza's your legacy. Build it with Baccio. Looking to grow your pizzeria or restaurant? Then you'll want to try the power of a cloud-based POS system. With Hunger Rush, you'll get everything you need. 
This fully integrated restaurant management system allows you to easily streamline operations, accelerate the delivery process, and grow your business through Hunger Rush 360 marketing. And it's so easy to use. Want AI-powered text ordering? It's built in. Need to track orders? No problem. Schedule a personalized demo at HungerRush.com today. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. All right, so I hear it's your 12th anniversary. So what are you guys doing? Congrats on 12 years, that's awesome. Thank you so much. We're really excited to talk with you all today. All right, so what are you doing to celebrate that 12 years? Are you having a spe- any specials? You're doing any celebration within the pizzeria or just kind of quietly acknowledging? <laughs> we are, um, we're so busy that actually, I think this morning, Ralph, our dad, said, you know, it's our 12th year anniversary today. This October is, is National Italian American Heritage Month. Oh, so yeah. We'll do specials all month long for that. Mm-hmm. Long, we'll do specials. And, and normally what we do is every day, uh, I think everyone thinks we have a book and these are specials we're going to run. But <laughs> what we do is like, what are, what's fresh? What do, just yeah. like they do in Italy. It's fresh. What do we want to use? Are they vegetables? Is it seafood? Is it, you know, pork, steak, whatever we're going to do. And we'll mm-hmm. decide what our specials are going to be. And we, we kind of know what our customers really like over the years. We've learned yeah. that. So every day we'll highlight something that's special that we know they're really going to. Uh, and, you know, and it goes back to customers can come in no matter what's on your menu. What's your special today? What's your special? Everybody wants yeah. to know what the special is. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, so I what, mean, what okay. have been successful? Sorry, <laughs> I, we're probably going to the same place there. <laughs> yeah. What are some specials that are really successful for you guys? Oh, definitely our, our meatballs. You know, meatballs is the number one kind of seller. Yeah, I mean, meatball. Yeah. <laughs> we always have new customers who come in and they say, hey, you know, what, do we, what should we try? I say, whatever you get, make sure there's a meatball in it. Whether it's a uh, <laughs> meatball, Lasagna like, has meatball in it. We have meatball platters by City God. I have a meatball. Yeah. yeah, so I think this food that uh, I think I fell in love with with cooking was the meatballs. That's kind of brings it all back That's to fantastic. all back. That's our grandmother's recipe. So on Sundays, you know, we were kids. Yeah. We go to our grandmother's house every weekend, mm-hmm. and it's her recipe for spaghetti and meatballs, which really inspired the restaurant. I mean, we lived. My brother Jordan and I lived here in college, mm-hmm. and we would yeah. go buy these pound bags of flour and make pizza for our friends, um, and and cook our grandma's recipes that she and her family had brought back from Calabria, Italy. And so today on the menu, you're always going to have spaghetti and meatballs. Mm-hmm. There's a huge and, um, influence in everything we do. We also you know, utilize that in our pizzas. You know, okay. We have a, a Mulberry Street pizza, which is basically a pepperoni pizza with our meatballs sliced or crumbled up on that pizza. Just as, we also have the spicy, spicy Calabrian meatball pizza. Yeah. We import some chili wow. peppers to Calabria in the you know, yeah. Calabria. I always the chilies in there with the meatballs, a little herb ricotta base, really good pizza. Ooh, that when, Denise and I, when Denise and I travel to a pizzeria, we're like, oh, this pizza's great. But like when they bring out the meatballs, we're like, I know, yes, we're both like, yes, yes, we're ready for that. <laughs> Actually, I got, I got a calzone okay. last night with meatballs. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> so you go to restaurant for the first time and you, know, you try the meatball. And if the meatball's good, you can stay. But if the meatball's right. funny, good. <laughs> You know, right away. Yeah. yeah, I'm like that with sauce too. The sauce Absolutely. doesn't yeah. hit. I just, I'm like, it's all. It's kind of like that with salsa too. <laughs> so, so let's take it back 12 years. Oh, you guys are a Neapolitan restaurant in in West Virginia. So that kind of yeah. had to be the new concept for them at the time, right? Well, we had, you know, I think a question that came up was how are we going to compete with all the mm-hmm. big boys? Yeah, yeah. You're a small restaurant. Even a Huntington's about fifty thousand. It's a nice tri-state area with Kentucky and Ohio. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you can do that, differentiate. That's why we started bringing our, our dupa, our double lot flour, you know, in from Naples. We bring our pecorino in from Rome. We bring all of our, our gabagool, our, you know, our cup of coal, our prosciutto. Mm-hmm. Everything comes in from Italy, our super sata from Calabria. So that's the way we differentiated what we are doing here. We wanted wood fire. You know, one yeah. of my earliest 
memories is a wood fired oven that my grandmother had. And one of the, probably one of the first things she had built when she came from Italy. Yeah. And I thought if she can take that and bake 20, 30 loaves of bread at a time, you know, she'll build a fire, knows how to wet it down and get the right temperature. Yeah. Surely we can do that with a wood fired up and an infrared thermometer. So we <laughs> <Yeah>. have <laughs> a pizza oven for not just pizza. We do rainbow trout. We do uh, Nova Scotia salmon. We do filet mm. mignon. We wow. cook at night. We cook our pork shoulders, cook our briskets. We use that oven for everything we possibly can because it makes us unique. It differentiates us. And it's a, it's just definitely a different different a wood flavor. fire flavor. You know, I yeah. mentioned yeah. my email to you, but we've got a good firewood guy named Frank, and he brings yeah. us the best. Firewood. It's cherry. <laughs> makes all the difference. Makes all yeah. the difference, really. It yeah, does. It does. Yeah. He's the man. Yeah. And the the cherry wood has a certain smoke. You yeah, it does. Of, one of our most popular dishes, I think. Back to that question, has been a um, probably two, but they're both with braised meats, and we'll do overnight. We'll take either a big beef brisket flat and cover yeah. it in red wine and let it yeah. just hang out in the fireplace overnight when the coals die down. And the uh, next morning you come in and you bake some bread and get that brisket out of the oven and it's falling apart. Um, uh, or you do the pork shoulder. Yeah. And you yeah. smoke a pork shoulder overnight in the fireplace as well. So you can well, use that heat in the oven really well. You know, oh, when that's... we opened it, the intent was I had retired uh, a couple of times. The guys were living here, finished school. I thought, let's put a little sandwich shop in. Something yeah. for the university, something for the St. Joe school close by. Yeah. It was a matter of probably a month or two. Our customers are going like, listen, we want more. We want to, <laughs> taste, we want to taste your food more. What else can you add to the menu? So we went from being more or less just a carry out kind of sandwich deli. Uh -huh. Had a deli case in here. We went from doing that, hired our first wait, wait staff. And from there, it continued to grow. Yeah. Uh, Making the fresh pasta, making the double up, the flour pizza dough. Mm -hmm. And that's why we focused everything. And I think going to Pizza Expo yeah. was a tremendous mm -hmm. help for us. Love you know, that. to listen, to learn, make friends with people like Fabio Viviani, who yeah. actually worked a lot of conference calls with us, helping us and guiding us on how we should structure our business. These are the things. And if you know Fabio, mm -hmm. he, he does words <laughs> yeah. straight to the point <laughs> what, you're doing, what you're doing wrong you know yeah. talking to him talking to tony gemini uh you know chris bianco we, we listened to these fellows in the keynote we got to know them and i think those are the things we brought back you know mm -hmm. and, and one thing i've always stressed the customer's not always right you got to listen to your mm -hmm. customer but at the same time your customer might not know what they want unless you give them the chance to taste that yeah. or experience yeah. what you're bringing to the table. Absolutely. And I think that's what we've been able to do. Uh, and it's just, that's really worked out well for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who pulled the trigger back then to say, hey, you know, we're, we're making stuff for our friends in college. Let's, uh, let's open a business. Like who pulled the trigger to make that happen? <laughs> I'm still, I'm still in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's I like, my wife go like, you know what? Are you sure we're ready to do this? I said, do it. Yeah. We've got to do it. What should we wait another month? I said, no, pull the trigger. Yeah. We have to do it. And her biggest fear, she used to say, you don't take criticism very well. What are you going to do when somebody <laughs> criticizes your food? Yeah. Uh, I had an explanation for that. <laughs> back talk to them when they come back in. Nobody will criticize my food. <laughs> I got but you. Need to listen to your customers. You know what? And you got to realize if you're in this business too, you're not going to make everybody happy. You know, there's always going to be somebody who wants something different, not satisfied. If that happens, we want to be the first ones to hear that. We want to be the first ones to correct mm -hmm. what. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we have listened and learned from a lot of our customers. Hey, can you make this? Can you change this? Mm -hmm. You add this to a, to a pizza, take this off. And you have to be open-minded in this business and, and have a business plan, but be mm -hmm. willing to adapt and change that plan as you go along. Yeah. yeah interesting too, because we'd never really been in the restaurant business before. This was kind of a new thing for us all. Yeah. Um, we all grew up, you know, in the kitchen. We grew up eating. We grew up cooking. Um, it's something we always, my brother and I talked about in college, like, man, I wish, I wish we could find some way to not have a nine to five regular job. Yeah. And dad was the one who really kind of uh, got us all 
he was the fearless leader who got us all going in the right direction and got things started. But yeah, it's kind of fun to open up and see what happens. Well, you definitely don't have a nine to five now. You have a, a 24 yeah. 7. 24 7. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always like that, we, uh, that TikTok. That's always funny. <laughs> <laughs> the night before we opened, I'll never forget. And my brother and I lived upstairs. We still had our bedrooms upstairs. And yeah. so we're painting. The paint's wet on the walls. And this house is built in the 1890s. Uh-huh. And we realized paint color was not matching in the bar foyer area so we had to go to walmart two different walmarts like, at like 2 a.m one or two a.m we're painting the walls <laughs> trying to match stuff up, open up the next day and um the first order we got was for a like a mediterranean panini and i looked at my dad and i was like well how much eggplant are we going to put on this or how much yeah. feta cheese goes on this and from then on we just kind of learned on the fly we had yeah. paper plates the first few months and we, we've gone like that said all the way to um more of a trattoria style where you've got mm-hmm. we have a small menu but do things that are more entrees and specials mm-hmm. along with the pasta and pizza yeah now what i what i love about your story is that you've kind of grown incrementally you know as you've needed mm-hmm. to do things you've stepped up and and you know adapted and you know in the last 12 years what have been those big aha moments for you as far as the growth of your business like like what's been a big thing that really changed the game for you or helped you increase sales or helped you uh you know get into your community even more i think a lot of it's listening to your customers like dad was Mm -hmm. saying i think you have to really be engaged with your customers and you know find out hey how was everything you know if it wasn't great what could we do better what would you like to see on menu and a lot of that came with um you know we first started out we only had i think one or two pastas on the menu yeah and now pastas i mean we we do more pastas probably than anything <laughs> else i mean our pizza are still a top seller yeah but pastas really surprise us in sales so that's one of those things we never expected but you yeah. kind of like listen to your customers and they you know hey they were craving more lasagnas more pastas i um, mean even on the pizza side you know we got to introduce i feel like a new style of pizza to this area because yeah. everyone you know i feel like is used to the the American style, the the dominoes, the hut, the yada yada. And we kind of brought in this Napolitano style. Yeah. We kind of have a fusion of like our of our Appalachian. So I call it like a Napalachian pizza. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> Appalachian. That is you my need to, favorite you need, to trademark, term. you need to trademark that for sure. Trademark that. Yeah. That, that is put it put it real big on the outside of the house. That is Napalachian. I love it. <laughs> I use a lot of local flavors. So we've got farmers on the Ohio side who grow some fresh produce. We've yeah. got uh, the local farmers market here supplies a lot of stuff for us. So we try to infuse a lot of the, the local as much as we can with yeah. our traditional style. Yeah, I'm sure there's no no you know no shortage of farmers in it and 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 all that around you right yeah. now. So yeah that that's perfect. Incredible. Absolutely. You yeah. know yeah. Josh they're not that far from John Gutekinds. Uh- they're not yeah. that far from us either. Yeah, really. <laughs> they're not that far from John. We're in, Louis, we're in Louisville, so. Kentucky, so yeah. Oh, okay. So no, they, actually, we you guys got broccoli. a lot of the same farmers. We, Do what? We can't get broccoli raw here. Uh-huh. That's one problem, you know. We have so. Oh. We there's a uh, Finneman, Paul Finneman has a produce company in Louisville. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. his sons, Christian first, our, and then uh, Creighton mm-hmm. play basketball for Marshall. Oh, and nice. every time he would come in for a ball game, he would bring us a case of broccoli rob. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, gone in no time because the customers who really love that, you yeah. can't buy it anywhere here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that we'd make it special. So things like that. Anything we can source that way uh, and bring in. We use Russo Foods. We were up in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. They bring all of our flour, our tomatoes. They bring everything in they can, our, our cheeses, our salamis all comes in. Yeah. We even bought and had shipped in a spiral dough mixer from Italy for our pizza dough. Cause oh, we nice. do everything exactly like the Napolitano I uh, love pizza. That. We did oh. that research eating apples too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got to research, right? In Italy, but you have a good- there, we brought that, we brought our pasta machine in from Italy. So we, we try to make sure that everything we do is authentic. Absolutely. And and that's a huge advantage. That's a huge advantage you have on the on the large chains. It's like yeah. you, you like the broccoli rob story. You can you can turn on a dime and put that on the menu. You know they yeah, right. they can't do that. So that's you know that's a yeah, huge no. advantage. Yeah, we've got a very small kitchen, but it's um you know the house is so old and it's very neat. Mm-hmm. But it all gives you the ability to change things on the fly, and you can have one person 
walk in and say, you know, one of the farmers from Furman Farm says, I've got some pretty rainbow char or whatever in the mm -hmm. back door. Okay, tonight we're going to pop that on the menu mm -hmm. and let's try a pizza out. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites the past 12 years was the one we did with um, country ham and corn and goat cheese. Yeah. Mm. And somebody had sweet corn from a local farm, so we put that on there. But that's like our kale we get from Furman Farms on the Ohio side. And we created the Katie Lee pizza, which is like a, a crispy kale pizza with oh. a little sweet proof on it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that, that pizza exploded. That's one of our most popular. But, it, you know, we get to feature local, yeah. race, you know, local, which is really cool. Katie, what? she's from Houston. I don't know if you've ever oh. had a chance to meet her or not. Uh -oh. yeah. you know, she's on the food channel, the kitchen, but she's from here. Oh, and nice. she came to the restaurant and I said, we had a kale pizza. That was our special that night. And yeah. that night I said, I <laughs> Okay, you love kale. You're always talking about kale on the Food Network. Yeah. So we fixed the Katie Lee pizza with the, the uh, Peruvian sweetie drop peppers. Oh, I so, love those. Those are so good. And she posted that. It was like, she showed me, it was like, wow, 30 some thousand likes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, those are, like a, those are like a those are like a flavor bomb. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know, something I'm interested in, you know, I grew up in a town very similar to yours where the college is the primary you know employer and things and uh and there's that separation between the college and the rest of the town you know in a town of fifty thousand, you know how are you able to engage in those very different communities and kind of have that balance for your customer base yeah i think what we've done we don't really do say a lot of advertising we don't mm -hmm. really invest in advertising but we do is we try to do as many you know, we try to give back to the community whenever we can. So we try to do, you know, fundraisers, we'll donate food. And yeah. it's a great way of, you know, showing your community who you are and being engaged in your community. Um, but part of it, too, is I think you just have to do what you do best. I feel like you can't try to target everyone in the market. Yeah. I think you've got to put on blinders and say, you know, this is who we are. This is our style of food. And you you preach that out and whoever, you know, loves it, loves it. And uh, you just go with that. Well, you know, all being being our whole family, all of us, uh, their wives, my my wife, they're all Marshall alumni. Mm -hmm. So oh, we're yeah. heavily in the university. Mm -hmm. I never thought when I was a freshman here in 1970 that <laughs> we would have a restaurant inside the student well, I call it student unions Memorial Student Center. Yeah. So now to walk in and see a La Familia Express in the student center, where the students, yeah. the faculty pub and go up mm -hmm. and buy our pizzas we have mm -hmm. a, a huge bar, horny oven that's just beautiful oh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah we do our pie every day uh i mean it's just it's really been been fantastic so we do a lot with the medical school we do a lot mm -hmm. we cater sky boxes for the university so we're constantly doing things with the university and also the hospitals mm -hmm. so if you look at it, with the university and two hospitals that was one thing fabio said he said okay guys uh, again, I'm going to say how he said it, but <laughs> you guys are in with the university and the hospitals, we'll talk again. Yeah. And that's what they've been successful to do. And that's yeah. really worked that way. We ended up with a 10 year contract to be inside Marshall University's campus yeah. with a lot of familiar. So, our satellite location right there, you know, where we all went to Marshall in the student uh -huh. center now. And it's still exciting to see that. It's pretty wild. Yeah. That yeah. name and pizza's going on on campus. How long I has think, that been around? Yeah. How long has that been around? When did you guys get that going? <laughs> this is, I think, our third year, second yeah. third year of campus. The, yeah, the yeah. irony here, we opened in August of 2019. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you know. We were shut down. Uh -huh. Shut down here. Yeah, finally got after nine weeks of total closure, could do some curb curbside service. Huge amount of support but, from the community uh, with curbside. Yeah, that was a blow, but yeah. we were able to able to make it real it in yeah you know the one thing i'm curious about is you know having a non-conventional um location you know a how hard was that to set up with the university as far as working out the agreements and things and then mm -hmm. um just oper from an operational standpoint of being able to have that second location in the student center of just maintaining both locations because it's a little different with the express Right. For sure. It's, um, you know, we used to do lunch and dinner both here at the restaurant mm -hmm. and now we're just at the only kind of location here at the main, mm -hmm. at the main location. Yeah. Um, so that, freezes, that kind of focuses a lot of our energy in the mornings, at least for the, for the campus location, mm -hmm. but it is a lot of, it was a learning curve, just like we had here at the restaurant. Yeah. Where you're kind of going 
this like sit down dinner style service of restaurant, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're doing counter service kind of, you know, as, as fast as you can, kind of pizzas right. and pastas and sandwiches yeah. on campus. But, you know, it takes a lot of um, trial and error. You see what works. You got to listen again to the to the student population and see mm-hmm. what kind of they are you know demanding versus your, your regular dinner crowd. But it's been a fun change up, too. I think it's been fun yeah. to kind of, you know, change our change our strategy a little bit, see a different kind yeah. of crowd and experience. Yeah, yeah experience. and what's nice, too, you have your students coming in. But mm-hmm. at the same time, those students, their, their families come into town. They want to come to La Familia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I get that. that ties, ties us together with the Marshall family and the faculty. So mm-hmm. you see the spaces on campus, as you see in here. But with uh-huh. that mean you actually two different businesses. Mm-hmm. And we have La Familia, then La Familia Express there. And uh, yeah. we actually have the name Mulberry Street. That's our, our separate business. But everyone says, is that Mulberry Street in New York? I go, I'm like, no. That's Mulberry <laughs> Street in southern West Virginia where we grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I love it. Time, I could push a chair over to the stove without getting in trouble. <laughs> and uh, I watched my mom. My dad was a fantastic cook. And mm-hmm. those are the, the things that uh, Joe and Jordan here, they yeah. fell in love with. I think Absolutely. watching us, I used to travel a lot with, I retired from the chemical industry, uh-huh. processing chemicals. And when I came back home from traveling, because I managed North America, it was, my mental health was to open an ice bottle of wine and cook. Yeah. So the guys had a chance to see me doing you know, maybe stuffed fillets or stuffed prawns with crab meat and everything. Mm-hmm. So they got experience a lot of different things and uh, taste a lot of things and then we traveled mm-hmm. traveled internationally to get that experience and their mm-hmm. taste for international food and then of course the time in Italy and visiting I've got more family in Italy than I have here mm-hmm. so we spend time talking to them every week and visiting yeah. with them and that's been a big big a boost help. for us yeah that's yeah. a huge help for sure you know let's uh Let's flip gears a little bit and talk about what's happening right now in the industry, because I know that, you know, everyone's getting hit with the inflation and there's a lot of things about pricing right now and staffing. Um, What are you experiencing right now, you know, in the restaurant um, and kind of how are you able to look forward? Well, there's been a lot. uh, I think those are real challenges that we'd all agree on. and one thing that it kind of ties into your earlier question about big aha moments. I mean, during the, the past couple of years, we've had to focus on how to deal with those issues, challenges and maintaining staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, here we must have a team that some of the folks have been with us for almost 10 years now. Yeah. And then some, um, just like every other business, they come and go yeah. and it's hard to retain employees and team members, but we've thought about other avenues for growing the business <clears throat> and developed a line of, um, a hot sauce with Calabrian peppers and our family's uh, grandmother's vinaigrette that she made growing up. So it's um, two things that have been very popular and we developed an online store. So now okay, we've got La nice. Familia Calabrese.com and we sell mm-hmm. not only our food from the menu to go, but our hot sauce and our vinaigrette. We've got yeah. some partnerships in Calabria, Italy, and we're working on bringing mm-hmm. over some olive oil to okay. partner and, um, and label that olive oil and bring it here to this region. It's what yeah. we cook with, so we'll be able to give that to our our guests as well to take home. So, is it so commercially it, available yet? Is it? Uh, are you are you selling it like in groceries or in the restaurant? Sauce like, where else are you selling? The hot cool. sauce and vinegar are commercially available. Oh, nice! Uh, the olive oil. We're hoping by the holidays because I right. got yeah. You know, we put a little teaser out, and uh, actually, I'm supplying the UPC codes and all the information right now to the uh the packer in calabria okay uh, so we're hoping we will That's have fantastic. that and actually russo foods will be bringing that in for us so we okay. have the you know that contact which is really going to enable us to bring mm-hmm. in those products and, and we're working too with our family and others in calabria like like tuta calabria we visit mm-hmm. them and watch Lenata. Mm-hmm. okay bring in specialty foods uh-huh. i know you can go online you can look at a lot of these I laugh all the time and somebody says, yeah, Tuta Calabria. We saw that on Jada's site. We saw that on Bobby's site. I said, you can see that on our site. (laughs) (laughs) Jean Paulo, who him and his sister own Tuta Calabria are good friends. Yeah. So we had the chance to visit them in in Italy. And uh, we're looking to expand and bring the products in that are unique. It's just Mm -hmm. we're getting right now, place our order for all of our dolce, all of our 
panettone, all mm -hmm. of our imported cookies, everything for the holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we keep those things seasonally. You know, when you go to your regular menu, and you mentioned the pandemic and, and cost, we constantly review, you know, all of mm -hmm. our numbers, sales, yeah. cost, our product cost. Yeah, and if you don't, you're not going to. You're not going to survive. Absolutely. Things like scallops, where we, we would do a lot of scallops. We use diver scallops, yeah. dry scallops for uh, scallop appetizers, but but also for pizzas, seafood uh -huh. pizzas. Yeah. We finally take those off of the menu for quite a while yeah. because of the cost. Some customers would say, we'll charge market price. I said, market price is okay if someone wants to pay market price. Yeah. If they don't, you're going to be stuck with something yeah. that's going to cause you a loss. So yeah. when the cost came back in line, we were willing to put that back on the menu and bring mm -hmm. that back to our to our customers. So we constantly look at those costs and look at freight and try to make sure we're on top of the day to day basis mm -hmm. what all of our costs are. Hey, that's what you got to do. <laughs> I mean, customers are I think customers are very understanding and our clientele, <clears throat> I think professionally wise and the ones we have here that are regular we've had customers that have been coming here since the day we opened. Yeah. And uh, and I think they understand that and they appreciate the quality of what we're trying to bring to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, man, you guys have been such a joy to talk to. Thanks so much for coming on the show today and uh, just sharing your story with us. Um, I'll, I hope to get an update on uh, on what's happening with you guys and your commercial line, because that's it's so it's just so exciting. I, I just have a real side question real quick. Do okay. you guys ever ever compete at the, uh, at the at the Pizza Expo or Pizza and Pasta? Because I mean... Yeah. You're describing your pizzas. I'm like, those sound like competition pizzas to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on the bucket list, yeah. I really want to go to the pizza competition yeah. and try yeah. to try to get it. That. that would yeah. be amazing. We you have um, do love the pizza expo. I we think, out there. I think there's still room in the Neapolitan division. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying. We have a show. We have a, we have a show in two weeks in Atlantic City. So I mean, yeah, there you go. I think there are a couple of little, little spots left on the Neapolitan. So that be so much fun. Uh, that real quick that we're getting ready to do, and, and a meeting with someone this week. We are going to try to initiate and start an Italian festival here. Oh, in, yeah. So, oh, that'll be fun. And that's one. Yeah. You know, also at that festival, we want to initiate a nice pizza contest. Mm -hmm. You know. We'll do some things like that, but yeah, we're going to try to do that to uh, uh, benefit the school, the church, uh, the uh, Hoops Family uh, Cancer uh -huh. Center for Children, oh, a few awesome. things like that. So we're, we're, we're hoping next year that will be taking place. I'm meeting with some people this week to, oh, to move that's on. That sounds so Weird. fun. Well, keep us posted. That's that's yeah. awesome. Uh, and you guys just keep doing what you're doing. Twelve years. I mean, that's 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 a good run. So uh, yeah. continue continued success for you, and uh, and we'll we'll catch you at the show maybe sometime. Well, thank yeah, you all so much for having good. us on. We love we love the hot slice of pizza today. So it's we're excited awesome. to be on today. All right. Well, we'll thank take you care, guys. and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, all right. Take care. So thank you all. Ciao. Bye bye.